Hello and welcome to the Movie Moolah podcast, where we have serious people talking about serious topics in often silly conversations. Um, with me today is Eric Winkler, the producer of I Am Lisa, as well as mm -hmm. writer and many mm -hmm. other things. So, uh, Eric, yeah. why don't you tell us a little more about yourself? Yeah, well, thanks, Ben. Um, yeah, I'm Eric Winkler. Uh, Live in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, I've been kind of working in the industry uh, sometime around 2016. You know, I've always been a writer. Um, I, you know, I won a writing award in kindergarten and, and through, you know, throughout my school schooling, I always, you know, would win little things here and there. But um, uh, degree in psychology, uh, which helped, and. Uh, uh, yeah, I worked for the Kansas City Star for 10 years, and I really gained a lot of confidence in my writing uh, while working there, you know, learned how to interview people and and just write all sorts of things, everything from movie reviews. I reviewed Jackass 2 for the Kansas City Star. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, um, you know, concerts, it, all kinds of different interviews. I had a column, stuff like that. But, you know, sometime around 2016, I was about 40, you know, I've I've always um, been a movie person. Uh, you know, I thank my mom for always taking us to movies. You know, um, I was born in 1975. So I grew up, you know, watching the movies of the 80s. And so, you know, my all time favorite movies are probably Back to the Future and Amadeus. And, um, you know, I, I, I just showed my um, younger son Raising Arizona the other day. And it, that movie's just so perfect from writing to to sincerity and funny and it, it just almost brings tears to my eyes to watch it it's so good so um so yeah really a child of the 80s uh uh so in, anyway sometime around 2016 I was about 40 and I don't know if it was a midlife crisis or what but I, I just decided to to dive in and and start writing movies um I was helped a lot. Uh, there was a local screenwriter group that I would I went to for a while um, until you know, I, I sort of felt like I couldn't learn any much more from them because they were writing a lot, but they weren't really doing anything to actually get their movies made. And I I always said I'm not writing these things to not get made. Like I I, I you know it's it's exhilarating to see what you've written uh, show you know being acted out on stage so it's it, it's always kind of humbling um so 2016 and i i started just sort of uh yeah i i dove in it took me about a month i wrote i am lisa the the first drafts were uh not good but i think um and my sons were already actors and so we networked um patrick ray you know our direct eventual director jake jackson our effects guy he was on board from the very beginning. We were actually one of our favorite movies from the eighties is Fright Night. Um, we we're at the, an Alamo Draft House uh, uh, screening of a thirty-five millimeter print of it, I believe. And Ooh. he just happened to sit. Yeah, he just happened to sit right next to me and my brother. And I kind of um, just struck up a conversation with him, and and I said, "Hey, I've written this movie." Um, he's like, yeah, hey, I'm a special effects guy. And we kind of became friends from there. Um, I sent him, you know, early copies of the script. And despite it not being perfect, he, I think he and other people saw potential in it. And it, it uh, continuously developed until like 2019. Um, my mm -hmm. father passed away and I uh, used my inheritance to uh, fund a giant chunk of the movie, um, which was a giant gamble. Uh, but, uh, it's, I always say the movie could have not made a dime and I wouldn't have regretted it because it was mm -hmm. such an amazing experience and it brought so many wonderful, hugely talented artists into our life. Um, mm -hmm. and the fact that it has been successful is just icing on the cake and, and, you know, uh, hopefully we get to keep, keep making movies now at this point, because we have a solid group of filmmakers that we, you know, we're like family. So it's, yeah. It's it's really fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is just around, like, uh, it's almost impossible to make a second movie if your first one isn't successful in some way, shape, or form. It doesn't necessarily right. need to be financially successful. It helps a lot if it is. But um, mm -hmm. if you get a ton of critical acclaim, 
it can work. It's just an entirely different subset that you need to go mm-hmm. to make your next movie. Whereas, like, I Am Lisa was quite financially successful. Um, for those of yeah. you who don't know, um, that was a Mutiny Pictures release while I was still CEO of Mutiny Pictures. So mm-hmm. that is, uh, I, I know the financial details intimately. Um, <laughs> I'm sure, and we both do. But the, um, yeah. so yeah, it's a, uh, what was the biggest thing that surprised you about releasing I Am Lisa? Um, I'll be honest. The biggest thing that surprised me was anytime we got any kind of negative feedback. Because, mm-hmm. because um, I, I mean, the, it was always a surprise to be like, oh my God, our movie's at Redbox or... Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. You know, I was in Phoenix at the time when it was in March of 2020 or 2021, I think it was when it, mm-hmm. when the, the hard copy got released, mm-hmm. me and my mom are going to all the Walmarts and like, Oh, do you have it out yet? And, and just to see it there <laughs> and, and just to see all the different platforms our, uh, our, our movie was on, uh, it's just, it still just blows my mind. And, um, you know, to, to have people come up and, and be like, they don't know me or something, but we'll strike up a conversation and they'll be like, Oh yeah, I've seen that movie. I'm like, Oh, cool. I wrote it. <laughs> you know, <it's, laughs> so that's uh so that's always great. Um, yeah, the biggest surprise though was like I loved the movie so much. And you know, Patrick Ray, who I love, our director, who really took me under his wing. I can't speak highly enough of him. Um uh early on he was like, Yeah, man, you 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 better mentally prepare yourself because there's going to be trolls and stuff online that are going to, that are going to want to shred you. And I just like, I couldn't picture it. I was like, what's not to like this movie's so cool. <laughs> and so, uh, so, um, so yeah, that, that had to thicken the skin a little bit, but I, I think that just, that's, that's a lesson you have to learn in this, in this industry, mm-hmm. because I, I don't care what movie you make, it, it, you can make, you know, um, the movie that wins best pick, you know, everything everywhere all at once or whatever and somebody's gonna you know somebody with a computer is gonna tear you down so um yeah you just need to not pay attention to that and um not respond to those sorts of things and that's that that was a learning curve so that was the biggest surprise for me but um overwhelmingly i mean it's it's so touching you know uh we've got 90 percent on rotten tomatoes off of like 21 reviews or you know Mm -hmm. um 50 some odd reviews on you know a, a people of critics uh, you know on imdb and mm-hmm. um overwhelmingly positive and and um you know the movie on youtube or, or, or the places where you do see um it's on i think avod on youtube but um mm-hmm. uh, uh we get a lot of great compliments there from people and i i'll i i don't know i probably shouldn't do it but it, sometimes i'll go on there and i'll just be like hey thanks for watching you know and stuff like that so it it, it is really touching when when people say they they can connect with with the movie so yeah, yeah. no um i don't know just speaking about being recognized for your work um i don't know if i ever told you this but <laughs> one of my uncle's like best friends actually saw it and saw my name on it uh which was uh my last name's yenny it's uncommon yeah um right they actually uh reached out to my uncle and said hey do you have like a family member named ben because he was in (laughs) it was there and i'm like what (laughs) okay so that one was a little awesome yeah um the yeah i didn't know that yeah no, it's it's weird how far these reach sometimes. Um, but yeah, it is a trip to go to Walmart and like be able to see a movie you worked on. I'm sure it's even bigger when you wrote it and like were really the at least one of the driving forces behind it. Um, yeah. Even just as a distributor, yeah. it's a ton of fun to go. But it's a uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I I saw you guys as uh, mm-hmm. uh, the very uh, folks who worked at Mutiny's uh, mm-hmm. Instagram posts and stuff. Uh, we we all did that at, in yeah. front of Redbox machines. So yeah, it's it's a blast. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's, and it it's actually for the filmmakers watching this because you know that is the target demo. It's actually one of the most effective promotional things you can do um 
In fact, most of the time you're lucky if you break even and don't like lose yeah. your shirt on yeah. uh big retail deals. But if you but it really increases your VOD sales to have it out there. It's I don't know exactly what it is, but it makes a big difference. Um and we definitely saw that with Lisa. We really shouldn't say anything specific about numbers, but sure. it is a very uh it was very financially successful and surprisingly so on digital just because transactional is really not doing well in general um or is a little different but it's just not great um especially now it was a little better back then especially with the pandemic but Mm -hmm. Just the amount of people who actually were willing to shell out money and buy this movie, this small, but very good, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, indie thank movie. you. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it was, it surprised a lot of us at the office. And, mm-hmm. but you are right. The movie has its detractors and yeah. it's, uh, it's normal. It happens. Nobody agrees on anything ever yeah um yeah but as i always say it's artwork and artwork is subjective so and 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 it would this world would be this life would be boring if we all like the same things so it's understandable Yeah. (laughs) yeah um but no it was a uh it was a very interesting one to work on on the other end of the camera of not even of the camera of the back office i suppose um mm. but yeah one thing actually yeah uh how much have you had to deal with piracy personally uh personally not a whole lot uh mm-hmm. it it was very early on well here here's the deal the movie was released during the pandemic so Mm -hmm. uh we made fright fest and as i always say you know obviously COVID 19 is a human tragedy you know thousands Mm -hmm. and thousands and thousands of people passed away that being said it did cost me a trip to london to uh fright fest to see the movie because it was online Mm -hmm. um it was online and another festival um that i won't mention but uh, because I I don't know where, but I'm sure somebody captured it somewhere. And yeah. so um, I don't know if you remember, but I would just check YouTube from time to time, and and uh, pirated copies would would show up from time. You know, I I'd say yeah. maybe half a dozen times or so it showed up, and I would just contact you guys and you guys. I, I tried at first to get it taken down myself, but you guys had it like like it. You, you know what you were doing as far as mm. getting stuff taken down. So I would just, you know, as you probably remember, I email you, you and Michael, oh, yeah. and I'd be like, Hey, look, uh, here's a, here's a copy of our movie for free on YouTube. <laughs> we need to get taken down. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Luckily, and now that it's not, that was, that was very much early on. I mean, now mm-hmm. you can watch the movie Avod on YouTube and it's, it's got over a hundred thousand views. So it's, it's, yeah why would you bother i mean it's a there comes a point where just doing um piracy doesn't make sense anymore it's a um and that's i think one of the biggest strengths of avod but frankly um it almost certainly the piracy leak almost certainly did happen somewhere in the festival chain i don't know where um right but the uh it did and it happens and just if you're a filmmaker watching this if you have any degree of success you're probably going to be pirated it's just gonna happen um the weirdest thing about lisa that i saw was we tracked four different dubs that were pirated again dubs like uh, subs whatever they're pretty easy but Actually, yeah. somebody getting into a studio and recording, like, foreign language dubs of it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't want to say exactly what they are, but fact. Yeah, that's... Yeah. That takes some effort. <laughs> yeah. So that's... 
I was this... very imp- yeah, I was very impressed with that, and I well, I would take it as a badge of honor if I were you, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you and I are, you know, mm-hmm. we're Gen Xers, so we were. I mean, for me, this goes all the way back to Napster and and Metallica's mm-hmm. fight with uh, Sean, whatever his name was, with Napster, and I remember at mm-hmm. the time because. I would be on Napster and I'd be like, oh, this is great. I'm downloading all these songs and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then it, uh, when when I finally released my own artistic content, it kind mm-hmm. of, uh, my, my, my attitude had kind of changed before that. But when you release your own artistic content, it's sort of like, uh, yeah, I think artists need to be paid for, for their content. <laughs> so, oh. so um, yeah, so. Speaking as a maybe small but vocal minority of distributors, yeah, yeah artists need to be paid for their content. Um, yeah. The uh, but it was a joke before I get flamed on that. Um, but yeah. the uh, weirdly, I'm pretty sure one of our international sales, I won't say where, um, mm-hmm. actually watched the film with one of their native language dubs, and it made the difference on the sale which oh wow that's (laughs) that's, okay (laughs) yeah so that was like okay i mean you don't care yeah "Ah, it's fine um it was a uh it's a strange thing um that it's if your distributor's smart about it's not about preventing piracy because it's a losing battle you'll never be able to entirely it's about right delaying it and yeah. utilizing it basically yeah. And, and yeah i i sort of feel like if if you build it they will come you know mm-hmm. if, if you make quality content you you god willing you'll 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 get your just rewards for it um yeah and and we that was our hope all along we mm-hmm. we always that's how we made the movie i mean you know we we were beholden to no one and as far as me writing the movie and us making the movie i was just sort of like you know i want to make something that i would want to see and hopefully other people are going to want to see this and and yeah i think if you make quality content like you said you're going to get pirated but um hopefully you'll you'll get um you know what's what's rightfully yours coming to you yeah i mean i will just say i disagree with that mindset i do think that it takes more than just making a good movie because there are a ton of yeah. good movies that just they can't be sold because they didn't position themselves well in a way right. that was uh in a, it just in a way that people would actually want to click the buy button. There's a lot more right. to it than right. just making a good movie because, frankly, yeah. without a good poster, a good trailer, and a good synopsis and placement, nobody's going to see it in order to build it. It's yeah. about getting your – but without Absolutely. a good movie, it's going to tank now more than ever because you just have to have all of these things, yeah. not just – the quality content well you're you're absolutely right and we are very much indebted to you and everybody at mutiny for everything that you did as far as packaging this movie and and getting it in front of as many eyeballs as possible and Mm -hmm. conversely to what you said i mean there are bad movies that get made but you know uh end up in a front of uh, in front of a bunch of eyeballs because of those uh Mm -hmm. things that you mentioned being good so um so yeah it's 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 yeah it's I, I, tricky yeah. you know there's 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 no as i like to say there's no just like one book on on what a producer is exactly <laughs> or, or, or you know like how 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 it has to you know this is the way it has to go to be successful so um but if you can get the coalescence with qu- quality content and quality uh support from your distributor uh yeah you're putting yourself in a good place for sure i think oh yeah i mean and to be clear that wasn't me fishing for compliments or anything it's kind of an educational <laughs> podcast you deserve but, them though yeah like, oh thank you um but the uh so it's more just the that is one of the most persistent uh tropes i fight against as a distributor that i uh maybe tropes is the wrong word but um 
I do want to make sure that that one doesn't get out there anymore because unfortunately a lot of film schools still teach it and it's just there's truth to it but it's not totally there um the yeah. so one thing that surprised me about this was and one thing I think made it a made it made it overperform according to uh, mm -hmm. some metrics um sure. was the amount of I, I don't think this movie was for the standard horror audience at its core i think it was in the reviews bear this out there's as much data as as is available and there's not as much data behind the curtain as i'd like there to be um yeah. but like platforms don't actually share their demography data with us which right kind of sucks it'd be great i know it, right it's even just the basics of it but um the I think that it, this wasn't a horror movie for Gen X white dudes, really. It, yeah. It, it, yeah. It, and I think that's kind of why nobody expected much from it. And then it, it took off like a rocket ship. I think it was really much more for women and yeah. to some extent yeah. queer people, too. So the yeah. um, and people on the LGBTQ spectrum, that's what I mean yeah. by queer there. Um, yeah. but the, yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, we actually got an offer from a, uh, platform like that. I don't want to say which one, mm. cause I didn't talk to their buyer before this. So, mm. um, but, and it was specifically because they also agreed it was a, uh, kind of stealth queer movie in a mm -hmm. weird way and it's yeah and i don't mean yeah it's just and i've gotten a lot of pushback on that when i bring that up but mm -hmm. it's um it's a very old industry and a very yeah. uh in a shockingly conservative one in a lot of ways um yeah and very resistant to change and i think that that is I think that's why a lot of distributors don't care as much about the data as yeah. like I slash we do. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it I would be interesting. Agree. Yeah, no, I agree with absolutely everything you just said. I mean, I almost consider the movie is considered horror by default because there's mm -hmm. a monster in it, but I consider it more of a thriller to be honest with you. I mean, there's not like, or psychological. I mean, I, I liked the idea of using the werewolfism as a metaphor. Mm -hmm. You know, I watched tons of werewolf movies before, you know, before and during the writing of the movie. Um, and that's one of the things Ginger Snaps is one of the best known um, mm -hmm. female led werewolf movies. And that movie sort of uses um, the werewolfism as a young woman's coming of age. And mm -hmm. uh, I wanted it, um, it with our movie to be sort of a metaphor for uh, uh, a survivor's struggle um and so uh yeah as far as mm -hmm. you know um the various demographics i mean the best i can do is is you know look on imdb and look at the ratings and you're right there's mm -hmm. um like teen older teenage female is where it's like ranked the highest and mm -hmm. and and the, the 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 queer community i mean that's just i'm just really honored uh uh by that um that we, you know, are almost every character in the movie is female. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so, uh, you know, if we have underrepresented communities that we can, um, um, I think we're doing a, a good, we're doing a good thing if, if, if we're representing those communities. And I mean, one thing I always say is, uh, as a, I've written other movies and every single movie I write, I'm writing one right now, uh, mm -hmm. has a female protagonist, um, sometimes queer, sometimes not. But uh, I always say, I mean, we are 
we are writing stories. Um, and me as a straight white male, uh, I, I don't find my particular demographic <laughs> interesting. Uh, uh, I feel free to say that. And so uh, I like to write movies where, honestly, the characters, it, it doesn't matter what race or sexual orientation or ultimately it doesn't really matter a whole lot but i like to have those characters be um uh women you know um you know people who don't look like me or, or, or aren't like me so um i don't know that's just 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 what i like doing so um yeah yeah i mean the biggest thing in there is making sure you don't uh making sure what you make is authentic if it's not a community right. you're a part of or a direct right. experience of yours and I, I don't think you had an issue here um but the uh no the uh i also think the uh it helped that wasn't it uh basically the lead villain who was also uh queer herself um, yeah mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah uh and I hope I'm the, not outing her, but I don't uh, think I am. Uh, no, no. I, I mean, okay. I, I will say, um, she's open. Um, okay. But we, I won't speak about any one person specifically. But I mm -hmm. will say, among our cast and crew, we were very well represented. Uh, if if that makes sense. So, uh, amongst race and sexual orientation so i i think ultimately that's the the main thing um when it comes yeah. to the the cast and crew um and so uh yeah I, I feel good about that yeah no and i think that that's kind of key to this even if even if it's not um you need the people on the crew and very well represented on the mm -hmm. crew even yeah. if it's not in the uh front even if it's not in the driver's seat basically right it's um at the top of the hierarchy or whatever you want to say um yeah. but the other thing is we need to make more content like this especially given mm -hmm. everything that's going on um right now um the not a political podcast um but yeah. the uh there's also a huge thirst for it and a uh, a huge demand for it i should say um the and it's a huge generational divide as well i won't say yeah. what movie it, this was for but um It'll probably come out eventually. Um, the I've I'm currently working on a movie that features a that features basically an LGBT story in it, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a test screening of this film, and mm -hmm. the uh, and one of the people who was at the test screening, and there was overwhelmingly positive press for this early stage test screening not press um reviews for this yeah. early stage test screening and yeah. it was just one person asked a question like basically like hey this whole gay thing it's it makes me uncomfortable and detracts from the store and like basically got that far into it and he was an older white dude yeah it was um and then he ended up saying and then somebody else in the audience a uh younger person stood up and <laughs> shouted in the middle of this him talking um said hey old man that wasn't for you that made the movie for me <laughs> and it was like <laughs> i wow love that story um and it's about yeah that's fantastic yeah and yeah uh, it's just a fantastic thing and it, and being a part of helping disseminate content like that or making it um yeah i'm sure has to feel 
really good, frankly, because it's yeah. just yeah. It it's it does it makes you feel good and goodness that's a story I'd keep telling if I was you that's pretty amazing <laughs> so um, yeah I mean let's let's make the world a better place by diversifying you know mm -hmm. so that's it's all we can do we can do our best you know and um, you know it's uh, with the other things that I've I've written and that I have in the pipeline. Um, that's that's uh those are themes that uh i hope to continue uh so mm -hmm. yeah yeah no it's a it's a very interesting time to be in this industry um so what now that you've made a feature um mm -hmm. what are your biggest challenges moving your career forward yeah um my biggest challenge so far has been not becoming a movie investor uh, uh, uh i really enjoy doing this i love doing this um you know i took a giant gamble with the first movie and it paid off but being a movie investor is not ultimately what i want uh, and not what my wife will allow me to be uh so uh um, so what I really want to do is transition into that uh, phase where I'm being paid for content. Um, uh, so I think that's been the biggest hurdle for me so far. And even even with a uh, you know a successful movie and a movie that we can show you know potential investors numbers, uh, it's still difficult. Um, mm -hmm. That being said, I I think. I mean, goodness. I mean, if, if the first movie hadn't been successful, we, we would not be talking sequel, uh, mm -hmm. but, but it has been successful. Um, and I have faith that, and we do have pots cooking. Uh, I, uh, have a wonderful script from that. My mentor wrote Jimmy, Jimmy George, who is, mm -hmm. um, who wrote Lisa too. Uh, he is a script editor for a living, uh, mm -hmm. I was one of his first clients back in 2016, um, uh, charged $75 at the time. And he is rightfully, uh, far more expensive now. Uh, but he has, he has seen many of his movies, uh, come to fruition and actually be made. And so I know he's very proud and he was involved with the first movie. And so he was really, I had written, um, a, a script for Lisa too. That was, it was sort of more, um, in line with the first one and this one Jimmy's kind of took it in new new more new direction so than my did and so I was fine with he, he was the right person for the job and uh, him being involved with the first one so heavily um, and so uh, so yeah um, we're working on you know I'm just working on trying to get that movie made uh, I've got uh, an LGBT themed dramedy which you know that is much more difficult to raise money for um not being a genre film uh especially uh it, it's it, for me it's sort of a i try and get an it's a chicken and egg thing with like trying to get a quote-unquote name and then like trying to get the money uh, the, the the money for the movie it's mm -hmm. like if if i could just get like one to sign on the other one one would one would happen but um so yeah i'm just uh you know i've i've got this short movie uh, that's going to be done within the next couple of weeks. Um, mm -hmm. we're, we're all extremely excited about it. Uh, it's I, I, I'm hoping that it blows up the festival circuit. And then uh, I, uh, I haven't actually written a new movie from start to scratch in a while, um, mm -hmm. several years. And I actually sat down and wrote the first 10 pages yesterday of this uh, clown short movie uh, mm -hmm. um the the full length feature so i'm i'm getting mm -hmm. started on that getting back at writing and uh yeah it's it's a blast so it's yeah. it's exhilarating but it's it's also can be overwhelming the uh the creative freedom because you you know you can take you you being sort of the god of the story you can take it in whichever mm -hmm. direction you want to go and, and you want to be like mm -hmm. okay i want to tell a good story am i taking this in the right direction and you know I sort of feel like storytelling is a bit of a lost art anymore, but, um, but yeah. So, yeah. So
for those of you listening um more uh those of us in distribution really don't like the word dramedy um i would find <laughs> a no. another way of phrasing that um but yeah. the uh don't misrepresent your story ever but yeah. um yeah. and the reason we don't like it um is that uh the two hardest things to sell internationally are dramas and comedies and it just yeah. has to do <laughs> with the fact that what makes us scream is universal but what makes mm -hmm. us cry is highly cultural dependent culturally dependent as well as what makes yeah. us laugh and it's just mm -hmm. both of those mean that it's extremely difficult and once you add the lgbtq qualifier Yes, it's a good niche that if your distributor actually knows how to market to niches, which sadly most don't, um, mm -hmm. you are going to be targeting an already narrow. You're going to be taking a niche product and making it all even more narrow in their minds. Yeah. But I have slight disagreements from that as a distributor. Um, but yeah. as a sales agent... It's very different when you yeah. are just basically as a sales agent, you're one level removed. You basically just have yeah. to find the people who will be able to take the film out correctly. Yeah. And yeah. as a distributor, it's actually your job to find the audience. And that's the yeah. you have. It's a very different mindset for that. It's yeah. um, in a lot of ways, sales is easier, but you have significantly less control over the end product. It's a, um, and it's also not easy because you have to, it's an inside game. You have to already yeah. know people to get started. So it's yeah. a, uh, sorry, I am just going on on that for a little too long. But the, uh, no, yeah. it's, I, these are things I know. And, and mm -hmm. especially with that movie, our co producer, mm -hmm. um, Kristen Vaganis is, is who played Lisa. Mm -hmm. She's involved with that movie too. And I know that she, I haven't had this talk with her yet, so if she's mm -hmm. listening. I'll I'll probably talk to her about it before she sees the, or hears this. But mm -hmm. um, I know that raising money for that is just going to be difficult. Like there is a Hollywood actress who I won't name who has read the script, loved mm -hmm. it. She is very popular right now. Been in she's in a popular TV series. Been in a couple mm -hmm. of popular horror movies, um, but like getting the money to try her to sign on or, or or i i think the movie honestly if it's going to come to fruition we're going to have to do a guerrilla style um mm -hmm. you know just like skeleton crew here in kansas city <laughs> and and work for what little money we could scrape together and and deferred payments and friend prices and stuff which you know we already get friend prices um mm -hmm. you know shooting lisa and we will when we do Lisa too and, and so on and so forth. But yeah, no, you're, you're certainly right. So that's, that's yeah. the only, everything else I've, I've done has been genre and the stuff I'm mm -hmm. writing now has been, you know, horror genre stuff. So. Yeah. yeah. Basically in order to make any movie actually happen, um, you have to have three things. One is cast and, when mm -hmm. I say any movie, this is accepting guerrilla filmmaking. Um, yeah. It's cast, distribution, and money. And you do need yeah. all three, but the thing is, none of the three, with the possible exception of distribution, because if you know somebody, because it's a uh, much more relationship-based game, that mm -hmm. LOI, the LOI from the sales agent or distributor is a lot easier to get, but if you get the mm -hmm. wrong one, it can actually hurt you more than help you. Um, mm -hmm. the, um, there's a reason that, uh, sales agents and distributors are kind of known as, a uh, used as slimy used car salesmen. Um, he said mm -hmm. wearing a very shiny vest, but, um, the, yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm not, um, the, so basically the easiest one on that is often the sales agent or distributor, especially if you've made any work before, um, mm -hmm. because their commit's pretty low. They don't have to do anything until it's done anyway, um, mm -hmm. most of the time. Um, the cast, the distributor will help you with the cast, 
more than the, and it yeah. will also help you with the investor because they yeah. want to know you have a path to market. So you have to do kind of all three of these at the same time and basically wait for one to fall. I'm dealing with something similar on a higher end deal um, where it's just more about making sure there's just enough traction to make it worth them coming on basically. And mm -hmm. there's a couple of things I have to move around to make that happen. And sorry, I have to be really vague on this right now, but no, the, it's okay. <laughs> it's a, um, but yeah, it's a, it's just about pushing multiple boulders up the hill at the same time. This is why I think a lot of people, um, my friend, uh, Joanne butcher, who, uh, actually was the first podcast we recorded for this. Um, she says making a movie is a miracle and in a way it really yep. is it's a um yeah jimmy george uh, verbatim says the same thing <laughs> it's a miracle j miracle just to get, and he's you know made a lot of mm -hmm. movies he's got the w he's got the best zero budget movie i've ever seen mm -hmm. called like the wnuf holiday special or something like that on on mm -hmm. shutter and but yeah that's he always says it's a miracle just to get it made so mm -hmm. Um, anyway, I kind of interrupted you. <laughs> no, I was <laughs> so Joanne. Up, so yeah, no. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing. It's all about these. Being a producer is going back like a bunch of conversations. But the uh, mm -hmm. being a producer, there isn't a guide. There isn't a book for it because it it's different yeah. every time. At least a little bit. Mm -hmm. You can learn from experience. You can figure out what worked last time, so it might work this time. And you also just as you go through this industry as a producer, you grow your Rolodex and that's going to be the most important thing you have is your reputation and your Rolodex. And yeah. uh, I don't know if that's going to play to Gen Z anymore on uh, the term Rolodex. Yeah. Let me rephrase to a <laughs> book. Um, yes. But the, uh, um, so that's why it's such a, kind of tenured position is that once you've been through it you're more likely to have the solution but there's never any one solution it's always a yeah. hodgepodge of figuring it out even when you're big 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 people um so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's a, a lot of it's who you know and um mm -hmm. i mean i i feel lucky i know patrick and i both uh, very much enjoyed working with you and you know, I would encourage all of the filmmakers listening that Ben Yanni is somebody you can trust, uh, because I certainly do. So, <laughs> well, thank so, you. And um, and as you said, you 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 mentioned there is there is uh, an element in this industry that you can't trust. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, I went into it knowing that that was the case. And you know, Patrick and I are both we're both Midwesterners, so I'm sure people on the coast probably think of us as simpletons. Uh, but, and I, I, I sort of took the attitude that, you know, I, I'm just going to do the best I can to try and trust the right people. You know what? I might get burned sometime, but, um, I would rather that happen and try and get things fixed than change who I am. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, change is an important part as, as, as change and growth is important. So, I don't want to get taken advantage of. None of us do, but um, so yeah. I mean, I, I I do think you you need to be careful and and find people you trust and network with those people you trust. And like you said, there is no one way of getting this done. Um, you know, Patrick's been doing this for twenty years. Um, he's a, a you know Kevin Wilmot, who's an Oscar winner, is is was one of his teachers at KU, um, and it's it's still not easy for him either and freelances and um so yeah there's no one way to do it it's not easy but it sure is uh exhilarating when you see the final product so it makes it all worthwhile <laughs> yeah it's it, it's not a an... it's not an easy game and mm -hmm. frankly it's not that well paid a game either um mm -hmm. even once you start to get some things rolling in that you'd think would be but right nah. um the uh eventually it gets you can make a comfortable living if you're good at it 
but yeah you're probably not going to get that mansion in Bel Air. It's yeah, it's I, I I look at that. That's just kind of art, you know. I mean, yeah. I I don't care what your medium is. I mean, mm -hmm. it just seems like a lot of if you if you know you want to create and you want to do art for a living, you might suffer. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say you have have to suffer for your art, but um, there's a good possibility you will suffer for your art for a little uh, a little bit. But um, like I said, the end results can be. I mean, I don't know. We've all seen office space. You, you know, you, yeah. you don't want to end up there. So. No, <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I think we've kind of moved away from uh, office space to a different Mike Judge film societally, but again, not a political podcast. Um, yes, the, uh, Idiocracy. Yes, that was it. Um, the... Uh, but, he was wrong on the 500 years thing. No, I'll just say that. It was wrong. way less than 500 way years. Less, yeah. <laughs> um, the, Fantastic uh, movie, though. It's a good movie, yeah. The uh, And yeah. I love that the person who played the president, um, God, how am I forgetting his name? Uh, Terry. Uh, yeah, C Cruz? Yeah. Terry Cruz, yeah, that's it. Um, yeah. Because he actually plays a guy named Terry in uh, Officer Terry in Brooklyn Nine-Nine because uh mm. and the reason that officer is named terry was to make him take the role so nobody mm. else because he was mm. declining it and then they changed the name so that if anybody else took it he'd always know so yeah it was such How a, funny yeah but anyway uh he actually did a uh, political campaign around the start mm. of 2016 on that and that mm. was crazy but um again yeah. not a political mm -hmm. podcast um the don't demonetize yes. me um the mm -hmm. you, you've got to take the uh the i i've always admired um uh, dolly parton who i mm -hmm. find to be a national treasure but she always says apolitical which yes. i think uh is whether you're a business owner or you are an artist is very wise so <laughs> uh yes. so uh do like dolly parton on it <laughs> that is my is my that motto is what i am trying but the uh so yeah. yeah um okay so when i guess at this point where can people find you yeah um the best place is across social media at mm -hmm. i am lisa movie um mm -hmm. no uh underscores or any of any of that stuff um instagram twitter and facebook i am lisa movie uh i have sort of evolved that recently to encompass all of the projects that i'm part of mm -hmm. um because there's a short uh i've got called michaela that's um uh in festivals right now uh i've got this other one that it should be done in a couple of weeks called super happy fun clown that everybody is loving. Um, and it looks fantastic. I'm so excited about it that I'm writing the full length feature. Um, but so anyway, I'm sort of uh, the name of my company is called feed the queen. So mm -hmm. that's sort of the umbrella for all my projects. And I think I'm just going to keep the handle. I am Lisa movie. And, and, mm -hmm. you know, I sort of just put on there, this sort of encompasses all the projects of feed the queen, but mm -hmm. obviously it is very, I am Lisa heavy. So yeah. It, uh, at I am Lisa movie, uh, hit me up at any time. Uh, I'm always, you know, uh, happy to hear from anybody if they have any questions about any movies, um, uh, uh, about I am Lisa or about any other projects, or they mm -hmm. want to work with, me or and or patrick you know we uh you know i i i really enjoyed making movies here in my hometown of kansas city and we feel like we can make them uh for less than what it would cost uh uh in other places sometimes um mm -hmm. it's just for example we can a lot of times use uh locations uh for free because mm -hmm. people are just like oh we're gonna be in a our our shop is gonna be in a movie cool yeah we're not gonna charge you know stuff like that so um with lisa we tried to make a, a movie um that looked like it cost a, a lot more to make than it actually did and i think we were successful in doing that um so yeah anybody wants to get a hold of us uh at i am lisa movie is the best way to do it so cool. 
then yeah, that's the biggest thing. Um, so what are your top, I'm, I'm going to borrow this one from Alex Ferrari, but uh, what are your top three movies, favorite movies as it stands right now? That's so hard. I, I've got like a top 10. I, I was, <laughs> I, I've watched Raising Arizona and I was like, man, that's got to be top 10. Um, Back to the Future, I think is my favorite. If, if you got into mm -hmm. my head, um, I just think the writing is cool. It's, mm -hmm. it's just so much fun to watch. It's funny. It's, it's, it's got rewatch value. Um, <laughs> uh, for the longest time I said Amadeus was my favorite movie and, um, there's that uh and I, I my father was from germany i know arnold schwarzenegger's from austria so but they're about the same age so i grew up watching arnold movies so any of the 80s arnold movies um i'll i'll, I'll put number three at fright night um from okay. 1985 with uh roddy mcdowell chris sarandon and um william ragsdale Mm -hmm. uh it's it, i'll just to throw a horror movie in there because it's i just think it's so well done um i i you know i i try to get my sons my sons are 14 and 17 i try to get them to watch movies with me whenever i can and i usually have to beg them or bribe them to get them to do it <laughs> and so so my younger son i i just kept at him and kept at him i'm like there's this movie fright night let's please just watch it with me and then he watched it with me. And then the next day or two, I said, you know, they made a sequel for this movie. Do you, do you want to watch the sequel? He's like, no, I think I want to watch the first one again. I'm like, oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so I did something right. And, uh, you know, if it weren't for the Menendez brothers, there'd be a third movie, too. So that's a fun story in and of itself. So, but uh, actually, yeah. So, the, yeah. Go ahead. I think that's fairly true. Um, so, yeah. But anyway, um, I've got so many favorite movies. RoboCop was a was a oh, was a huge RoboCop, influence yeah. on Lisa. I I was eleven years old when that came out at the theaters, and um, I begged my mom. Like, I recorded Rex Reed and the whatever other guys their their uh, their review of the movie on uh on tv and i begged my mom to let my dad take me to the theater and see robocop and rex reed and whoever the other guy was really liked it and then then at the end they were like oh the the violence is horrendous that was just like a, a little tack on at the end and my mom zeroed in on that but like i said she she took us to live theater and you know she let us see movies and i'm so thankful for that so my dad took 11 year old me to see robocop at the theaters and yeah, that that movie is such a huge influence on all of the filmmakers behind I Am Lisa, and it is a revenge movie. Uh, by the, um, if you look oh, yeah. at you know the parameters of a, of revenge movies, so it was certainly a uh, big influence for us. It's a huge so. revenge movie. I mean, yeah, yeah. I think it's a. Uh, it was a. RoboCop is also one of my in my general cycle of top 10 um while yeah. i was still dating in san francisco i actually used that question as an opener um mm. in in bars um <laughs> worked what, a lot um what but, what was the question do you do, do you um, like the movie robocop no i mean never tried that one but now i'm curious oh. um the uh <laughs> but it was actually uh what are your top three favorite movies as it stands right now? They could change oh. in 10 minutes, but yeah, sure. And it's just, yeah. A, if you ask me yeah. in 10 minutes, I might say dirty, the original. Dirty. Mm -hmm. Nope. My Barbarian, lost you know, it's, it's yeah, it, it just depends. So it's a, it's a tough question to answer. Yeah. And oh, it always, are, are we back? Yes, we're back now. Um, okay, cool. and the, uh, it leaves it's an open ended question that leaves you a lot of room to have a conversation after, which is why I liked it quite a lot. Yeah. Um, for sure. The uh but um I would say uh is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? Um uh, no, I uh nothing else. You know, I've um 
thanks for having me on today. And uh, I've enjoyed working with you and um, as you know, and uh, hope to continue that into the future. So I wish you the best of luck. You're, you're a good guy and uh, good luck with the podcast too. I, I hope I've yeah. been a good guest. <laughs> you have, it's been a fun conversation. I mean, it's, good. it's a nice thing about podcasts are uh, a lot of the interview style ones are pretty low intensity and they're just yeah. kind of meant to be listenable and not even 100% listening. But the, uh, so yeah, um, thanks for coming on and being only the second podcast I'm recording on this. Um, Thanks for having me. No problem. Uh, This has been the Movie Moolah Podcast. I'm Ben Yenny. Uh, You can find me at thegorillarep.com. Like Warfare, two R's, two L's. uh, Or the link in the description of wherever you're watching or listening this to. Um, And also uh, check out my free indie film business resource pack. It's got a free ebook which actually talks about the uh what a producer does um a free white paper lots of templates including investment decks uh templates festival brochure templates and more and all you have to do is enter your email and you'll also get free monthly blog digests from me blog and podcast digests are segmented around topics so thanks for listening guys Bye-bye.